How can America compete with China's shipbuilding capacity? Now, the short version is we can't. America's shipbuilding crisis is a decades-old problem, going back to the early 1980s and kind of even before. We have closed a lot of shipyards. Uh, Brooklyn, Philadelphia, Long Beach, San Francisco. You know, I've often said that if the military-industrial complex actually exists and there really is a direct line of money from Congress to companies that build war machines, why the hell can't we build more than 1.5 destroyers a year? Right? Like most conspiracy theories, it just kind of collapses under scrutiny. Look, the fact is that it took us decades to get here with BRAC, or the Base Realignment and Closure Commission, cleaning house like Marie Kondo, and it will take decades to claw our way out of this shipbuilding hole. Fixing this problem is going to take time, yes. Uh, however, China is set to invade Taiwan in 2027, 2028 maybe, and our current rate of production means the U.S. will only have three more destroyers by then. This is uh, way too big to begin solving this problem on our own. We need to consider a list of solutions, and there's not going to be a single magic bullet here. We also need to build a system that is resilient and quick to produce ships to solve our shipbuilding crisis. But before we continue, here's a message from today's sponsor, Ground News. President Trump gave a speech in front of Congress last night, which is why I want to talk about the mayor of Los Angeles. You know, the mayor is being recalled because of her performance during the wildfires in Los Angeles, or actually her lack of showing up. But the recall story isn't in the Wall Street Journal or the Washington Post. But you can find that story on Ground News. I actually pay for Ground News. They do not give it to me for free, although they did send me this hat and this mug. But back to this article. So this right here, this bias distribution is really important because if you're on the left, you might not have even seen this article. And this is actually the best feature because if you lean left or lean right, Ground News actually shows you articles that you may have missed because of your own personal political bias. And for each article, Ground News tells you who owns the publication, its factuality rating, and whether it leans right or left. So go to ground.news slash Ryan to get 40% off Advantage plan, which is the same plan I got myself and my dad, and start getting more informed today with Ground News. One of the many solutions to our shipbuilding crisis would be to enlist support from the world's most competitive and advanced shipbuilders, Japan, South Korea. I am not the only dude saying this. Uh, the U.S. Naval Institute's magazine Proceedings has offered similar solutions. For now, the United States and other allies could partner with South Korean and Japanese shipbuilders to co-own entities and open additional commercial shipyards as combined national security programs. The United States supported Japanese and South Korean industry during the Cold War to fend off the Soviet Union. The same logic now holds to fend off China. A concerned viewer offered criticism when hearing foreign shipbuilders might be a solution to America's shipbuilding crisis, and he said, Korea and Japan are right next to China. Because of this, I would imagine it wouldn't be hard for China to severely incapacitate shipbuilding capabilities of the United States by carrying out attacks on Japan and Korea. Yes, uh, Chinese sabotage, destroy, disrupt. Uh, they, they could do that to these facilities and their ability to produce ships. However, a resilient shipbuilding system, which is what we need, would have multiple nodes of production involved. Uh, Japanese and Korean shipbuilding would be one of the many nodes within the American shipbuilding system. Another concern brought up by a viewer relates to sensitive information and an inability to secure this information from prying eyes and ears, uh, such as the Chinese and the Russians. One guy said, it may be harder to enforce controls relating to sensitive information foreign workers having access to classified information may increase the risk of a leak. Sensitive information might be kept safe by involving trusted Japanese or South Korean military officials and compartmentalizing as much as possible with embedding American officials kind of keeping a close watch on things as well. So the Chinese aren't just going to hand us a ship. We're going to be there overseeing the construction. Uh, we might also have American contractors do some of the more sensitive work, but when it comes to something like welding, a weld is a weld. America needs welders. China and South Korea have welders. I think we can make a deal here. Corruption is another concern, but uh, you know, one not really unique to our partners 
You know, uh, Korea has seen its last four presidents' terms end in corruption scandals. On top of this, Korea also has several powerful business-owning families called Chebol. Uh, companies like Samsung and Hyundai are controlled by these families, uh, and they are known to have been accused of corruption and scandals. Yeah, this is a concern. And, you know, it is one that we can address by ensuring our shipbuilding system, which includes multiple layers, and is it's accurately and efficiently monitored. So that way, any kind of corruption scandal ensures there is as little a disruption as possible. Now, to keep corruption and partners' domestic squabbles out of the equation, we could provide economic incentives and penalties to keep disruptions minimal. Everyone deserves to make money, right? We make it easy for someone to make money if they play ball. And we tie in American-provided support and on-time deliveries. Now, building a resilient shipbuilding system would require relying on both domestic and foreign shipbuilding resources. This system would also require a layer of surveillance and security to ensure it may, remains resilient and responsive and effective and mitigate it against leaks or other security compromises. The issues facing shipbuilding today are systemic. No one solution works here. Foreign shipbuilders are only going to be one part of the solution. We need to consider a new system for acquisitions, shipbuilding, and ensuring we meet tomorrow's needs for maritime threats. This will mean fundamentally changing the way things are done. One thing that needs to be reconsidered and reformulated is the Jones Act of 1920. This put severe restrictions on our shipbuilding industry. While protectionist in nature, it has led to serious confusion and an ineffective system of handling shipbuilding demand. Reframing the Jones Act to allow for foreign partners to enter our system would be a step in the right direction. However, we also need to look at our own shipbuilding industry. Direct subsidies would also help to add a layer of resilience to an industry that is in serious decline. I mean, how many people do you know who build ships? Now, recently, uh, an op-ed published in Marine Log suggests that the U.S. government subsidized U.S. shipyards and shipbuilders as we were doing prior to 1981 with the construction of differential subsidy program and similar to what China is doing heavily today. This is perhaps the fastest and easiest method to help the industry when a vessel is built the labor expense is anywhere between 25 and 40 percent of the vessel price. These large cargo ships are on a magnitude of well over 1 million man hours to build and over 100 million dollars to construct. With that, many labor hours, U.S. labor rates add up fast. The Asian nation's labor rates are significantly less and therefore making such vessels at a much lower expense. This makes it difficult, if not impossible, for United States ships to get into the ocean going market. Again, uh, this would add a layer of resilient shipbuilding systems where foreign and domestic partners are brought together and leveraged to great effect. Allowing foreign partners to enter the market would ensure demand could be met, while direct subsidies would ensure our shipbuilding industry wasn't destroyed by cheaper competition. And if you're thinking this sounds expensive, <laughs> yeah, you're right. However, an even more expensive thing would be the loss of our mostly peaceful Western-led maritime international order. A Western-led maritime order is predicated on having a powerful naval force to keep it going. One of the many arguments in defense of this comes from World War I, when maritime powers kind of locked down the open seas for political and military ends. The current maritime order is what allows for the things that we hold dear, on-time shipments, international trade, navigation of the open seas, a prosperous globalized economy. And if American naval capabilities collapse due to an inability to repair, rebuild, and build ships, all that's coming down. All of it. Yeah, a combination of cold hard cash, policy, and politicking with our allies are what we need to start exploring right now. We can't afford to wait, and we certainly can't afford to lose. Hey, if you want to support the channel, grab one of my ships right here. Live, Laugh, Launch, or Arleigh Burke Class Destroyer from Bunker Branding. Or you can also grab a copy of The Wind Machine. Uh, this is available on Bunker Branding as a signed copy, or you can grab one on Amazon or Audible if you're a Marine. And thank you guys so much for watching. 
In a world where fashion meets firepower, where style becomes strategy, it's time to gear up for the ultimate mission with Bunker Brandy. Introducing the Rock Out With Your Chalk Out t-shirt, a tribute to the fearless air of cavalry. Feel the adrenaline rush as you don the pride of the skies. For those of you who dare from the air, precision and power unite when you think outside the bomb. And don't miss our Live Laugh Launch t-shirts for Patriot and High Mars, because sometimes defending freedom means bringing the thunder. Finally, for the true defender of the seas, we present Department of the Boat People. Sail with honor and show your allegiance to the world's mightiest maritime force. With these shirts, hoodies, and stickers, along with the tow missile, landmines, and drone warfare. These aren't just shirts, they're statements. They're your way of saying I stand for strength, unity, and style. Get yours at Bunker Branding today.